You see this? This is Lucas Bergball picking up the pitch before the halfway line. So then he starts dribbling. He just dribbles around about three people there, and then he's running. And he's got four red orangey shirts in front of him. He's still running. Wait a second. He's still going. Oh, but sure, he's going to lose the ball here. He's, he's dribbled all that way. He's dribbled into a load of people in the box, and no bosh, he scores. Like, oh, how does he do that? How does he do that? He is so, so good. And it's if it wasn't for Brexit rules, he would have gone to Man United two years ago. I wanted Man United to sign him. We linked him again, actually, but he went to Spurs because it was Spurs and Barcelona. And I've done a video about how good Lucas Bergwall is, if you haven't seen that. But he's going to be an incredible signing for Spurs next season. He, you know you know when you just know that this is like an insane signing, you just know. So that got me thinking, what is the latest on Spurs transfer news? Because there's a striker that's been linked to Spurs quite a bit, and I feel like it isn't a name that you would make up and link to Spurs. Uh, Neto has been linked to Spurs a lot. So we're going to talk about why Neto, this potential striker signing and Omar Mamouche and other potential striker signings and Lucas Bergball will be massive signings for Spurs next season. It seems to get in the recruitment right. Bergball saw a doggy, like the youngsters they're playing, they're, they're finding, and I'm going to do an analysis video on analysis video on Sars soon. That is actually, in the, the script is in the works. But they could be big. So, obviously, the transfer news today regarding Tottenham is they're looking at Eintracht Frankfurt striker Omar Mamouche ahead of the summer transfer windows. They've been linked to him quite a bit by Bild, which is reliable when it comes to German um, sort of reports, info and stuff as well. And I think it's not like it's a big name striker that's worth being linked to as a paper seller. This is quite a rogue name for it to be made up at Spurs. Spurs in the transfer market, you don't always know what they're going to do and you think they're going to get someone and they don't. But we're going to talk about this guy but first of all we're going to talk about what i do i said i did a video on this again it's in this i said spurs need to go out all out for pedro neto he's going to be like key for them i think he would make them so good if he can stay fit i would go for a top striker like on carlo ramos slash um jocares and then i would go for a, a potential destroyer dm type pursuit alternative because that will lock the other midfielders because i do think the majority of spurs is best Spurs midfielders are better in the eight role than the six role. And I think maybe Spurs might not have the funds for that. I don't know what their FFP or funds is like. So maybe going for a striker like Omar will be a, a value for money, a better alternative because they've also got some that can play in the middle. So maybe wing is actually more needed and Pedro Neto, who could cost quite a bit rather than a striker. But today's video, we're going to look at how Bergfall, this potential striker signing and Neto changes Spurs. So who is this guy that... Spurs look to be linked to the most, and, and this could be the one Spurs find. Could this be another gem for Spurs? He's not as young as the other players, but could this be another bit of good recruitment for Spurs because their recruitment's really improved? He's 25. His predicted cost is 20 to 25 million. Um, he's been really, really good this season, like really good for Frankfurt. I wasn't too aware of this guy before this season, to be honest, and from what I've heard, he wasn't very relevant before the season. Uh, but he's gone to Frankfurt and he's been um, brilliant this season for them and that might give him a 20 to 25 million pound price tag but when you look at what strikers are going for I think that's not too bad what I've noticed about him is he's rapid he'll be great in transition he'll be great in counter-attack and when I say he's rapid he's like that Van der Ven rapid like there are players that are quick oh you know he's a quick centre-back but no Van der Ven Van der Ven is like a rapid centre-back and I think he's like the Van der Ven of, of strikers this guy is rapid like rapid he eats up round i'm telling you that now he's got 15 goal contributions in 2100 minutes which is equivalent to 26 starts which isn't bad his goal contribution numbers before the season weren't good so that would be the risk for spurs but he works really hard um and coaches have praised him for his work rate commitment to press and attitude he's been praised heavily by his coaches about how hard he works for the team which is what Andrew would want because he plays a demanding style of football he mostly plays as a nine but he has the ability to drop deep as an attacking midfielder and he can rotate across the front three but he is most of a nine but we know Andrew likes players that can rotate but what he can do is he can link up play creativity wise he's all right he can hold up the ball well uses upper body strength well and he can drop deeper into deep areas if needed obviously harry kane for tottenham not comparing him to harry kane he's nowhere near the levels of harry kane no one is going to be near the levels of harry kane for a good while harry kane is the best striker in the world but um he can do that thing what harry kane does where you can go goes into deeper areas and, and link up play a bit um, but what uh, stands out about him is his ball progression stats. Uh, Ange is a very attacking philosophy as manager. This guy likes to attack, 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 move forward. And he seems very comfortable taking the ball into wider areas as well, although he predominantly stays central if you look at his heat maps. Statistically, he looks comfortable going into wider areas, drawing up defenders, which can open up space and allow for rotations and, and areas to um, sort of, what's the word, like 
split the defence so there's space opens up for other Spurs players to run through, which is something that Ange likes. In terms of other info, he outperforms his XG, so he's somewhat clinical. Um, he's more clinical than Richarlison, actually, and we're going to do a comparison of the two. Got two assists versus Bayern, showed himself in a big game, found his teammates in key areas, used his upper body to well, versatile. And I think, while I would say that I think Goncalo Ramos would be unreal for Spurs, I know he's not been great this season, or someone like Jokeres could be unreal for Spurs, you think you've got to look realistically at the budget. Obviously, Real Madrid want a striker, uh, Chelsea want a striker as well, and they'll probably have more budget. Although, Real Madrid are getting Mbappe, so will they want a striker? I don't know, but there'll be a lot of teams in the striker market as well. Arsenal will be in for a striker. And, you know, it's Austin Hem out of budget. It's Ivan Tony out of budget with 100 million men slapped on him by Brentford. I think Spurs might go for someone that is in budget because they might say, look, we want Neto. We want a DM. We've already brought in Berg for when, do you know what I mean? And, and Daniel Levy isn't a big spender. So I think if you look at the value for money, this could be a good option. The only thing is, this season he's been great. Like when I've watched him this season, which isn't a lot, I'm not going to lie to you, but I've been aware of him this season because of how good he's been and how I've seen people praise him. He's been good. Before this season, is he on season wonder? That that's the only that's the only thing. But I do think he could be a good signing because you can play Spurs centre forward. He can add you can play Son centre forward for Spurs. He can add the depth, and then you could use your funds on Neto and the DM. And the reason I say DM is because I think that will get the best out of Burke. But if we compare him to Richarlison, you can see that his expected assists are higher. He more, does more passes into the box, more offensive actions. Um, obviously, Richardson recalls more passes, but Richardson plays for a team that has more of the ball in the attacking areas. Aerily is better than Richardson, and I always, I always thought Richardson was decent aerily. Non-penalty goals, he's pretty much equal to Richardson this season, but his XG is lower, so it shows he's more clinical than Richardson. And if you look at his sort of um, percentile statistics as well, he's in the higher percentiles this season for assists, uh, for expected uh, assists as well to show that you know he is creating chances as well um progressive carries 93rd percentile as i said he's a great ball carrier but successful take-ons 89th percentile which means he's good at running at players dribbling at players which is what spurs will want they've also got lucas burble coming in so they might bring in that striker i think they will bring in a striker even though richardson has been good and has looked good i think they will bring a striker but they've got lucas burble coming in i've done my own video on lucas burble so i'm not going to talk about it too much but as you can see i've done a white line but he laid a pass through there and got an assist in that same game he saw that brilliant goal i showed it at the beginning his vision is good i do think spurs would need to destroy a six to get the best out of him he is compared to frankie de Jong, but he's definitely better in the more attacking midfield eight role than he would be in frankie de Jong's role. he's a bit more attacking minded so i think if there was a destroyer you'd really have not the best out of him but he is a very good player that would be able to play across the midfield he's an elite dribbler completely press resistant technical ability is through the roofs two goals and an assist yesterday just so good to watch you when you watch him he's so good and, and i spoke about him before on my manchester united channel when i found out i was going to spurs you guys saw my video like i don't know loads about this oh my guy that spurs have been linked to but lucas burgle was one because of his trials at united how good he is how good he is to watch that i just like he's that one guy i'm like this guy this guy should be special. He should be special. And he can cover a lot of ground, does a lot of off the ball work, which Andrew want. Elite ball carrier dribbler, going to help Spurs progress up the pitch. But he's very good in tight spaces, dribbling, passing abilities, break down low blocks, some great lines, can make cover passes to runs off the ball. Always makes himself available to receive the pass. He always wants the ball. He plays quite confidently. He plays quite forward. Uh, but it's his dribbling. His dribbling. His dribbling is where he's just top, top tier. And... For me, if Spurs get a good striker in, they get Lucas Burbo in, and they get Pedro Neto in, they'll be in a really good position next season. And I think Pedro Neto could be a game-changing signing for Spurs because he's not only rapid and elite and great 1v1, but he's very good in the counter-attack, in the transition, because he can dribble into large spaces. He's very two-footed, so he can play centre-forward, left wing, right wing, which is what Andrew will want. I mean, I'll do, I'll do a more detailed analysis on Pedro Neto in the summer, and he excels at running down the byline and delivering in low crosses. So if you've got Sonny playing in the middle, and Pedro Neto just draws down the byline and puts in a low cross, Son's going to thrive off that. He's He's the kind of guy that's a nightmare for fullbacks with 11 assists this season. Um, very, very good creativity wise as well. Um, and this was interesting statistics on Pedro Neto. If you look at sort of non penalty goal involvements per the amount of possession, because Wolves have less possession than Arsenal or Man City, um, he's actually second for non penalty goals between him and Foden. So if he played for a team like Spurs with more possession, his goal numbers would be above Foden, according to statistics. Obviously, taking the pinch of salt. His assist numbers, yeah, are just crazy. His non penalty goals and assists would work out more than Bakai Saka and Foden. Statistically, statistically, again, these are statistics. So again, take the pinch of salt. 
But my point is, if Pedro Neto was playing for Man City or Arsenal with, their, with the possession that those teams have, it would be expected that he would get more goal contributions than Saka and Foden from the wing, which is pretty incredible. But his successful dribbles almost doubles them. He's probably, in terms of, if you want a winger that is direct, that is a great dribbler, Pedro Neto is what you want. Progressive carries again, he puts them down. He's one of the best ball carriers, one of the best dribblers. If Ange just wants someone that's going to dart up the pitch, that's going to dribble, that's going to go forward, Pedro Neto is your guy. He can also go inside. He can also go outside. He can go out wide, put in crosses. He can come inside. There's the half space, have a shot. Although he doesn't score many goals, that isn't because he's not clinical. That's because he doesn't take many shots. And I guess playing for Spurs, he will take more shots and score more goals. Um, his crossing numbers, again, very, very good. Progressive passes, very, very good. And to summarise today's video, because I wanted to do a video on Spurs, because they haven't played for a bit. So haven't done a video in a while. But I think Birdball has everything to be an elite player. And yeah. Spurs have got one with him. Omar Mamouche could be value for money, a good signing under Ange. I'd have to watch more of him and understand him more, but I think he would then maybe leave the funds for someone like Pedro Neto and potentially someone like a destroyer DM, which I think would get the best out of Birdball. Um, but I think Pedro Neto in particular would be the perfect signing for Spurs this summer. I really do. I think his ability to never stop pressing, his work rate, uh, his decision-making, he's got a lot if he can stay fit. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching today's video. See you next time. Bye.